Iron John, a book about men. Robert Bly, the author, was a well-known poet for decades before he became one of the pioneers of the men's movement. Robert Bly toured the United States in the late 80s and through the 90s, talking to men, speaking to them about male identity. He focused not on divorce rape or legal issues, but on men's mythopoetic contact with their ancient archetypes, and especially their grief. PBS released a documentary film in 1990, intercutting bits of an interview with sequences of his public speaking. At the time of this video's publishing, the PBS interview is available in two places. Uh, the book was published later that same year. The book intercuts between the folktale Iron John, collected by the Brothers Grimm, and Bly's interpretation of its psychosymbolic representation of masculinity, and also Bly's own commentary, which springs from this story. In the Grimm story, a young man captures the hairy man of the forest, symbolic of man's wilder side. Read the tale either in Robert Bly's book or in Grimm's, available in any decent library. Here's an excerpt from Bly's book containing the poet's observation but excluding the folktale. We talk a great deal about the American man, as if there were some constant quality that remains stable over decades or even within a single decade. Even in our own era, the agreed-upon model has changed dramatically. During the 50s, for example, an American character appeared with some consistency that became the model of manhood adopted by many men, the 50s male. He got to work early, labored responsibly, supported his wife and children, and admired discipline. This sort of man didn't see women's souls well, but he appreciated their bodies, and his view of culture and America's part in it was boyish and optimistic. Many of his qualities were strong and positive, but underneath the charm and bluff, there was and there remains much isolation, depravity, and passivity. Unless he has an enemy, he isn't sure he's alive. The 50s male was supposed to like football, be aggressive, stick up for the United States, never cry, and always provide. But receptive space or intimate space was missing in this image of a man. The personality lacked some sense of flow. The psyche lacked compassion in a way that encouraged the unbalanced pursuit of the Vietnam War. During the 60s, another sort of man appeared. The wasteland violence of Vietnam War made men question whether they knew what an adult male really was. If manhood meant Vietnam, did they want any part of it? Meanwhile, the feminist movement encouraged men to actually look at women, forcing them to become conscious of concerns and sufferings that the 50s male labored to avoid. As men began to examine women's history and women's sensibilities, some men began to notice what was called their feminine side and pay attention to it. There's something wonderful about this development. I mean, the practice of men welcoming their own feminine consciousness and nurturing it. And yet, I have the sense that there's something wrong. The male in the past 20 years has become more thoughtful, more gentle. He's a nice boy who pleases not only his mother, but also the young woman he's living with. But by this process, he has not become more free. In the 70s, I began to see all over the country a phenomenon we might call the soft male. Perhaps even today, when I look out at an audience, perhaps half the young males are what I'd call soft. They're lovely, valuable people. I like them. They're not interested in harming the earth or starting wars. There's a gentle attitude toward life in their whole being and style of living. But many of these men are not happy. You quickly notice the lack of energy in them. They are life preserving, but not exactly life giving. Ironically, you often see these men with strong women who positively radiate energy. The strong or life-giving women who graduated from the 60s, so to speak, or who have inherited an older spirit, 
played an important part in producing this life-preserving but not life-giving man. I remember a bumper sticker during the 60s that read, Women say yes to men who say no. We recognize it took a lot of courage to resist the draft, to go to jail, or to move to Canada, just as it took a lot of courage to accept the draft and go to Vietnam. But the women of the 60s were definitely saying they preferred the softer, receptive male. So the development of men was affected a little in this preference. Non-receptive maleness was equated with violence, and receptive maleness was rewarded. Some energetic women at that time and now chose and still choose soft men to be their lovers and, in a way, perhaps, to be their sons. The new distribution of yang energy among couples didn't happen by accident. Young men, for various reasons, wanted their women harder, and women began to desire softer men. It seemed like a nice arrangement for a while, but we've lived with it long enough now to see it isn't working out. He was nurturing, but something else was required for his relationship and for his life. They had learned to be receptive, but the receptivity wasn't enough to carry their marriage through troubled times. In every relationship, something fierce is needed once in a while. Both the man and the woman need to have it. But at the point where it was needed, often the young man came up short. The soft male was able to say, I can feel your pain and I consider your life as important as mine and I'll take care of you and comfort you. But he could not say what he wanted and stick by it. Resolve of that kind was a different matter. I am recommending both the book and the PBS video. See the links below.